Hey there, so I'm just going to do a quick video here, uh, go through the controller quickly. Uh, here's our home page, this is what you're mainly sitting on. Um, if you want the details on this page, I do have a video there uh, called uh, Home Page Explained, so you can watch that. Um, we'll go on to our settings. Here's all our different settings for the controller. We've got our lights button. This takes us to adjust our four different light modes for the day and we can switch between our uh, 16 different channels by using the toggle switch down there and we can run a test mode to uh, run through the 24 hour cycle in a minute here's our weather settings um, here we can set our cloud target and the 16 different channels there uh, here's a bunch of other settings and we can start and stop our storm here and we can turn on a lunar mode uh, phase simulation um, if that's on, your uh, lights um, will, the moonlight will stay uh, illuminated uh, based on the brightness that the moon would be, the size of the moon. So that's basically how that works. Um, the length of storm and all that good stuff. Um, here's our schedules. We've got four different schedules, types. We've got our light schedules. Here we can see the day, um, how it's going to progress. Um, at 1230, it's going to dim for an hour and 45 minutes from moon to low sun and it'll continue on through the list there. Uh, if you press any one of these, uh, you can adjust um, the, starts, the start time and how long the fade runs for. So you can do that for any of those, and it'll show you which one you're adjusting there. Here we've got our power schedules. Um, here we've got eight outlets showing, and then if we toggle, we can see our next uh, eight. Here you can see there's only one uh, schedule because the last eight only has one schedule, but our first eight outlets have um, four schedules per outlet. Uh, if you press and hold one of these schedules it will beep and now that schedule is active. I can press it and adjust the time. If I don't want to use this schedule, press it again and it will disable. So now that won't. Only the ones in white are active and the grayed ones are not active. Um, if I press and hold one of these, I can now always on or always off so it's up to that. Um, these ones we won't be able to uh, enable them while it's always on. So if we push and hold that again it'll go back to our regular schedule and now we can enable another one. Uh, if we disable when they're all set they all go off and then we have to manually turn them back on if we wish and any one of these you press and you can then adjust it. It'll tell you the outlet, the schedule and show you what's plugged in there and you can set your on and off times. Uh, here's our dosing. Um, here we can set a time and the day it goes off. Uh, we can have it go off seven days a week like it's currently set at 12 a.m. There's fertilizer 2, fertilizer 3, and fertilizer 4. And here's our feeding schedules. Um, we've got two schedules per day. Uh, feed 1 and feed 2. Um, if it's checked it'll go off and we can set the time for feed 1 and feed 2. Uh, here we've got web alerts. These are the current alerts you can receive on a controller right now. Um, there will be a lot more added. And audio alerts. Here we can set audio alerts and also when our web alerts go. So if our uh, value is below 6.8 or above 8.6, it will send an email alert. If you have it checked for the low warning and the high warning, you can have just one or the other. And it will also, um, there's an auto, there's a little speaker in the controller, and it will beep um, if it goes above or below. So you can set a different volume for each one of them. Um, you can see that they all change in the values there. So water 70, 72, 65, 105, 70, 80, etc. So that's a multifunction. Feeding. Here's what happens when our uh, schedule runs for feeding. Right now it's going to run for one minute. Our, when the feeding happens, all the outlets will turn off and after a minute they will uh, resume back to what they were set to. If I want uh, the bubbles to turn on during the feeding, I would select it like that and they will now run when the feeding runs and they'll return to the regular state when the feeding finishes. Uh, enable a feeder or disable. Um, that will allow uh, the auto feeder that you have plugged into the controller um, work and fed zero times um, reset feed count so the controller can only run the automatic feeder five times a day maximum if it goes 
to that 5 um, and something tries to get that feeder to turn, it will not turn. Um, you have to come here and hit the reset feed counter and it will redraw the screen and it will turn back to 0 and it will work again. Here's our dosing settings. Um, we've got a whole bunch of dosing pumps here, four of them, and we can adjust the dose amount, refill our reservoir. If the reservoir goes empty, the pump won't run, so you'll have to refill it when that happens. And then our manual dose. We can just press that and it'll tell you that that dose is happening. Uh, here we've got our hardware screen. There's a whole bunch of settings here for our hardware for our two different heaters. Um, we can set an on-off time. Um, if we don't have in our customization, I'll just quickly jump over to there. Oops, sorry. You can see that there's two heaters. If we take one heater off, now there's only one heater, and we go back to our heater settings, we should only have one because two is disabled. If we removed our other heater, this would also say heater one is disabled. So you need to. Uh, add the heater in the customization and able to get to the settings here but this is where you would tell it to turn on and off based on the water temperature so the heater will turn on if it goes below 73 and it'll turn off when it's over 75 and here we've got our calibrate temperatures we can calibrate our water temperature our air temperature and our light temperature by just adjusting up and down to whatever we like there our dosing pumps, here's some more settings for our dosing pumps. This is used for calibrating the pumps. We've got a pump rate and a bottle capacity and a manual dose. So you would just, uh, to have the pump run longer, up the pump rate and to have it run less. And I do have a video explaining how to calibrate your dosing pumps, so watch that. And we've also got our power heads, this is coming soon and Atlas Scientific Probes. This will be how you calibrate them. Um, none of these work right now, so that will also be coming soon. And sensor actions. Um, here we can set uh, some custom rules for the controller. So water temperature, for example, the low level. We can set a low level, so if, if it's less than, if our water goes less than 75 degrees, what do we want to happen? We're going to turn off that and turn off that. Maybe turn on that one turn on that one maybe let's uh, dose something and you can see green is on red is off um, skip action if schedule is running um, if right now we're telling it to turn this off um, that filter but if there's a schedule running that says that filter should be on and this is checked that will not turn off this will still turn off if there's no schedule running for it but that one will not so here you can set any kind of rule um, start up pumps um, use different sensors on, uh, say for instance, our ATO float sensor, our low level, if it's an open circuit, what do we want to do? We want to start that pump, and if it's a closed circuit, what do we want to do? We want to stop the pump. So, we always, if we're going to start the pump, we want to make sure we create a rule to stop it, or it won't stop. And we've got expansion ports. Here we can tell uh, the controller what's plugged into some of our expansion hub ports. Um, on 8 and 9 we can set either a DC accessory or a power head and on 10 through 14 we can select a float switch or a sensor. Um, these basically change if it's a float switch and you're in your uh, sensor action creating a rule like this float switch it'll say open or close circuit because that's how a float switch works and if we viewed something that didn't have a float switch it'll give us a number because analog sensors go from 0 to 1023 so you can adjust whatever level in the sensor you want if it's a di digital sensor you would just use the settings 0 or 1023 and analog anything in between and then do whatever we want it to do when that happens so that's all our hardware settings here we've got to customize we can customize our display um, how long it returns home if we're not touching the screen. If we don't touch the screen within 10 minutes and we leave it here, it'll go back home. Our scroll home page parameters, um, that's the pH area on the home page, how often it'll scroll through that and what it'll scroll through down here. So if we had salinity and TDS and pH, every two seconds now it'll scroll through those three parameters. Uh, display our temperatures in Fahrenheit or Celsius, so that's self-explanatory. And a screensaver. Um, enable our screensaver. If that's checked, 
Um, it'll go through the different images on the card every 10 seconds and the screen saver will start a minute and if we have that one checked as well fade to off then the display will just fade to black uh, no images will run and we can take that off and then we've got our custom sliders here we can customize the colors on all our sliders so on channel 2 on our lights if we had green we could tell we had green we had cool white there we had violet there now whenever we adjust our lights we know what colors are on our different channels and same with our outlets we can set different uh, custom icons for the outlets so outlet 1 maybe we have a light there and maybe in outlet 7 we have our CO2 plugged in so that's just handy to let you know uh, what you have plugged in there 8 and 16 relays if we select 8 now throughout the um, software you will only have access to the 8 outlets and you won't see the other 8 so you can view between those two and finally we've got systems um, in here we can sync our system if we powered up the display without uh, plugging it into our uh, power bar and change settings obviously they won't have the same settings in them so you can uh, customize or sync them here and restore defaults um, we can restore our default values and our network settings and this will show us our different I blacked out my username password for the video here and our auto dim how um, soon it'll dim based on our little sensor on the side of our uh, there it dimmed out because I covered it and now it came back to life and how quick it dims after a last touch and our screen brightness here and retrieve network info this will retrieve all our info this will check our external IP every two hours um, if our external IP address changes it will send you an automatic email so that you know your new IP address so you can still connect to the controller and here you can generate a random user and password or you can just uh, open the file, the text file on the SD card and type in your own custom. And down here we've got our set clock screen. Here we can set the date and time and that shows up here and we can turn it to a 24 hour clock or a 12 hour clock. So throughout the whole system um, the times will relate 12 hour or 24 hour. So that is basically Robotank. Thanks for watching.